Right now, though, we've got to save some lives, right? The situation is dire. Raymond, kidney disease. Mm. I mean, the numbers are galloping in a way that is scary. Doubling in a very short period of time. Today, if you walk into any hospital, about 13.5% of all the cases you see in the OPD are kidney cases. Wow. People are dying. People are dying. And it is getting worse. So let's try and figure it out. What are we doing wrong? That is, you know, damaging and risking the health of our kidneys. Our guests are the very best to help us with this conversation. Let's say good morning to Dr. Elliot Kranting Tano. He's a senior lecturer at the Department of Medicine at KNUST. He also happens to be a consultant nephrologist at the Confanochi Teaching and Kidney Health Advocate uh, at the Kidney Health International. So that's the Confanochi Teaching Hospital. Uh, the word hospital was missing there, forgive us. Uh, we also have our very own Dr. Yao Osafo. Uh, he's a specialist, a clinical biochemistry and toxicology uh, specialist. And uh, he's, of course, our drive doctor here on Joy. Uh, doctors, good morning to you both. Yeah, good morning, Kojo. I hope you are fine. Uh, I am very well, Dr. Kranti. Mm -hmm. It's a pleasure uh, to have you on our show. I hope we have Dr. Osafo as well. Yes, good, job. good morning and Perfect. good morning to our listeners. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I'm, I'm, I'm spoiled for choice with the two of you. But I think I'll start with Dr. Cranting Tunnel, if that's okay. Um, I, sure. Doc, I, I'm very interested in the general definition of the problem here. When we talk about kidney disease, what precisely are we referring to? All right, so thank you very much, Kujo, and thanks for uh, the, the invitation. I think... And the last time we spoke, we we're talking about the lumsy and the kidneys. And Indeed. this time around, we are talking yeah, yeah. <laughs> about kidney disease generally. Yeah, so um, kidney disease um, is a general term to refer to any condition that affects the function of the kidney. Hello, could you can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you clearly. Please, uh, please go right. on. Yeah, yeah so about uh, it's kidney disease is about any condition that affects these um, organs we call our kidneys. Um, and indeed, it's a, an umbrella term. So whatever affects it, irrespective of the cause, when we realize that the function of the kidney has reduced, uh, we call it a kidney disease. But when we realize that the function has reduced over three months, so meaning that it's been there for a period of time, then we will call it chronic kidney disease, which means that there's a possibility of what we call an acute kidney injury. For instance, when somebody gets some infection now, and in a couple of days, the kidney function goes down. We know we can correct it. But it becomes chronic. Then what it means is that it's so difficult to revert back to normalcy. Mm. And indeed, meaning that it's happened over a period of time. And that's what chronic kidney disease is all about. Mm. Interesting. All right. Now, uh, 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 Doc, uh, how vital... I mean, th is, this might sound like a very simplistic question. But I know why I'm asking. How vital are the kidneys? To human survival i'm asking this because some people you know some some organs you can pretty much live without you know I, 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 my, my pancreas doesn't work but i'm here so <laughs> so, so yeah. yeah how crucial are kidneys to to human survival yeah thank you very much and when we have discussions like this i like the simple questions because mm. that is when uh, uh, listeners will take some uh, take-home messages. Mm. So the kidneys happen to be extremely vital uh, because without it, you will not be able to make urine. I think that is the basic thing everybody understands. It's the mm. kidneys that helps us to produce urine. And what is this urine we are talking about? All the food items you've taken, all the drinks you've taken, and the bad ones that the body does not want. It's, uh, the kidney is one way that it gets rid from your body. Mm. So what it means is that if the kidney is not working, you are going to accumulate all these, in quotes, evil things in your body or these toxins in your body, which mm. would affect various parts of the body. So mm. though when the kidney is not working, it doesn't affect only the kidney. It affects your brain, it affects your heart, it affects your lungs, it affects virtually every part of the body. Mm. That is the major uh, 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 function of the kidney. But that mm. is not the only thing. The other thing the kidney does is that it helps you, Kojo, to produce blood. Mm. So what happens is that when your kidney is not working over a period, period of time, your ability to produce blood reduces. So most of the time, people might be going to peripheral hospitals and they'll diagnose them for anemia or low blood levels. Mm. And they seem not to be clear in their mind what may have caused it because they are not bleeding, obviously. Mm. 
Right. One of the organs to look at is your kidneys. Your kidneys help you to produce blood. The other thing your kidneys help you to do is to help control your blood pressure. As you sit and you're able to speak to me, as I'm able to speak to you now, my, my heart is able to pump at a particular pressure to be able to ensure that every organ receives blood. Now, what happens is that when the blood pressures are too high, the kidneys have to regulate it for it to be normal. On the other hand, when the blood pressures are too low, it's the kidney's responsibility to push it up by ensuring that you don't get rid of some things in your urine to ensure your blood pressures are always within where they need to be. Mm. Guess what? When the kidneys are not working, we tend to see young people come with very high blood <coughs> pressures because the kidneys have lost that ability to help control those blood pressures. So, again, mm. your kidneys help you to uh, control blood pressure. The other thing the kidney does is that now you can take a lot of water, and I believe, I mean, um, like you mentioned, using your other example, I'm sure with the issue of diabetes and all, you advise to take a lot of water and all. Mm. Now we are able to take all this amount of water and able to urinate them normally because the kidneys are working. Right. But guess what? When your kidneys are not working and you take too much, now the water does not come out of your body in the form of urine and it stays in the body, and your feet will begin to swell, your abdomen begins to become distended and some, or become big, and sometimes you cannot even breathe because this fluid is now in your lungs, and wow. then you virtually are drowning in your own amount of water in your body. Wow. These are the big, big functions um, of the kidney. But apart from that, for your kidneys to, uh, for your body or your bones and your teeth to stay strong, guess what? My kidneys have a role here. Because they tend to control the calcium and the phosphate that makes your bones strong. So if people have kidney disease over a period of time, these, the bones are not strong enough because their calcium levels go low and so on and so forth. So, I mean, I think these are the ones I'll let listeners know yeah. about as the major uh, functions of the kidney. That is why we need to keep them mm. working. For I'm so glad I have my notebook with me because uh, that, that, that was a lot and all very, very useful. Uh, uh, Dr. Tano, I, I'm, I'm going to conclude from everything you've said that if my kidneys fail, mm. I will not survive. You can't survive. Mm. All right. Um, uh, I want to bring in Dr. Yao Safo because, Doc, you, 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 you I mean, you run a, a hospital, so you see some of yeah. these cases on a daily basis. The Ghanaian situation seems quite dire. What, what is it? What, what, first of all, is there a particular kind of kidney disease that seems to be prevalent in Ghana? Right. Good morning once again, Kojo, uh, and then uh, good morning to my colleague, uh, Dr. Tano. And um, I'm happy that he situated this conversation uh, in the context of the function of the kidney, hmm. um, um, clearly outlining the principal functions of the kidney. So we all know that the kidney is very, very important to us. So, um, Kojo, if you look at chronic kidney disease, which uh, CKD, which is what we are going to uh, focus on or we are mm -hmm. focusing in this particular conversation, mm -hmm. then we are looking at persistent uh, impairment of the kidney function um, over the period uh, um, Dr. Tono talk, talked about. Right. And there are quite a number of different factors at play here, medical conditions. Mm. So CKD is an umbrella term. And then there are different medical conditions that cause the kidney um, to fail or not to function properly over a prolonged period of time. Mm. And then we'll slap the label on it and call it chronic kidney disease. Mm. Right. So that's some of, of these factors, and particularly in Ghana, um, what we tend to, to, to see. So... In uh, my clinic, and I run a, a, a metabolic clinic, mm. the two most important conditions we see are hypertension, systemic hypertension, mm -hmm. high blood pressure, as uh, in simple terms, and then um, type 2 diabetes uh, uh, mellitus. And Kofi, uh, Kojo, I think you know a lot about uh, 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 diabetes more than I do. Um, <laughs> Don't know about so that. these are the two medical conditions that typically we see. Mm. Every now and then, I will come across um, uh, um, some not so common uh, um, situations where people have used toxic um, plants or plants that have toxic or are toxic to 
the kidney. Mm. Um, we tend to use uh, uh, a lot of plant preparations for enema uh, in our parts of the world. Uh, mm. We take them orally as well. Well, not all plants are safe, and some of them can actually um, cause injury to the kidney, either in the acute situation or uh, over a long period of time. But again, every now and then, we would find a few instances of, um, um, we, we will call them poison, or I'll call it poisoning, using the conventional medicines that we use in the hospital. Mm. Conventional medicines. So not all medicines, and that's why, again, we discourage individuals from just walking to the community pharmacy and purchasing drugs. Because some of these medicines that you buy um, from the pharmacy shops can actually be injurious um, um, to, the, to the kidney. And one uh, particular group um, that I think people abuse often or go and buy from the community pharmacies will be the what we call insects, uh, the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs the diclofenac, uh, ibuprofen. Mm -hmm. These are usually used as painkillers. Mm -hmm. Painkillers. And I think people um, just walk into community pharmacies and say, oh, I, I've come back from work, I have this pain, so I will take it. So, yes, sometimes we'll come across these things. But overwhelmingly, uh, it is hypertension and then diabetes. Wow. On 17th May, I think we, the world celebrated World Hypertension Day. Mm. Um, and could you, if you look at the numbers, it's scary. Uh, the WHO thinks that there are about 700 million people undiagnosed uh, um, with hypertension, adults, mm. you know, who suffer hypertension and who are undiagnosed near in the community. So um, it is a huge problem um, for us for a disease that essentially... Um, it won't give you symptoms in this initial stages until mm. we slap um, uh, a cuff around your arm and check your blood pressure. It is very, very difficult in the initial stages for anybody to have any symptoms. So it's a very silent disease mm. until very, very late on. Mm. When it comes to diabetes as well, um, the initial stages, um, nothing dramatic. People don't pay attention to the changes in their urination patterns Mm. or even the fact that they are eating more uh, than they would otherwise eat, and then they are uh, um, urinating more at night mm. and drinking more water. People say, oh, the sun is up, and I'm sweating a lot, and that's why I'm drinking water. Mm. So it's a very insidious onset in terms of these two medical conditions. And until yeah. we do um, a, a screening test in the urine and then a blood test, a simple blood test, mm. we may not know that, you are diabetic. Indeed. So could you, these are uh, um, the yeah. two uh, common reasons why uh, people are developing yeah. chronic kidney disease, uh, not mm. just in Ghana, but in most parts of sub-Saharan Africa and then I right. dare say globally. Now, Doc, I mean, we will, we will spend more time on those two major causes because I think it's right to do so. But let's very briefly touch mm. on the medication mm. Uh, causes right. that you mentioned okay so um you know traditional medicine mm. over the counter if you buy the wrong stuff and take too much of it or at the wrong times it can cause kidney uh, problems uh, right absolutely so we're looking at and ibuprofen one. I, I'm, I'm just curious you gave two examples diclofenac and ibuprofen yes. i can't tell you how common these painkillers are because you are absolutely right. They are um, things that you can get without a prescription. Yeah. Um, I know that in Ghana, unfortunately, even those medicines that are highly restricted, you would go in and then, unfortunately, in the community pharmacies, you would get access to them. Hmm. But, yes, these are regular, if, uh, for want of a better expression, these are regular um, uh, medicines that people can actually um, get. There hmm. are some antibiotics as well that people get off the counter hmm. that can be injurious uh, um, to the kidney. So we will classify all of these things. We will call them nephrotoxic uh, um, um, medicines. Hmm. Some of them are antibiotics, which people readily get yeah. access to. Some Doc. of them are anti-hypertensive drugs, uh, oh. which are used 
uh, or prescribed in hospitals. And that is why in all of these things, we are always saying, let your physician be the one to determine what drug you are taking at every point in time. Not that, oh, my mother is hypertensive and she's taking this drug and it is good for her. So as I've also been diagnosed, let me also go and, 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 and take the same. Um, it may be very, very, very dangerous. Unfortunately, when it comes to the plant-related uh, uh, medicines or plant-based medicines, we, I, I'm not able off the top of my head to give you the specific plant agents um, that are, have been listed in some of the studies. Doc, Doc that, before, studies. We, before we move to the plant-based medicines, because I think uh, that's another area on its own, um, let's 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 conclude on this thing with the the medication. So you gave another example. You said even antihypertensive drugs, some of them, could end up damaging your kidneys. So the hypertension itself is is damaging your kidneys. Then the medicine you are taking for it is also damaging your kidneys. Hey, and uh, I mean, <laughs> it seems that in some cases it's inevitable. Whatever you do, you're going to damage your kidneys. Right. So let me, let, me, let me bring some clarity to that particular point. There are different classes of antihypertensive drugs that are available um, for use in treating hypertension. Each of them has a side effect profile, and each of them has periods or, or I say, beneficial effects that we tap into in, in using for uh, therapy. And at certain stages, if you already come to your physician and hypertension has already damaged your kidneys up to a certain point, then your physician will not put you on certain medications. I, I hope you understand. And so it is not that, oh, we want people to think that, oh, if I take antihypertensive medication, I'm damaging my kidneys. No, that is not the point. But the thing is, you cannot take just any antihypertensive medication, just as you cannot take any painkiller at any point, just as you cannot take any antibiotic at any point in time. Mm. Your physician will have to make a thorough assessment of your basic kidney function. And I think some of these biochemical tests can be done in almost every district level hospital in this country. Mm. There are even medications that we use, antiviral medications mm. that we are using to treat HIV, cancer drugs, that we are using. So all these things, we are not going mm. to say, oh, could you, because we said some cancer drugs can cause um, you to develop chronic kidney disease, uh, you shouldn't take any of the cancer right. drugs. Right. There are different alternatives, mm. and I think your physician will then make the appropriate choice. So there's actually a very tall list of medicines that we use in hospitals that we would not use if we know that somebody has some impairment of kidney function. So mm. it is very, very, very important um, for me to make this point again, that the tallest antibiotics, antihypertensives, anti-cancer agents, antiviral agents, that can potentially damage your kidney. Mm. So to be... So and your to, doctor will make the appropriate choice for you. So to be clear, for the avoidance of doubt and to, to the understanding of our audience, you really should not take any medication unless a doctor has asked you to do so. Absolutely the point I wanted to make. Thank you. Right. Now, let's, let's before we bring in Dr. Uh, Tano, let's mm. talk about those plant-based medicines. I mean, this is scary. I mean, so our, our kidneys are being brutalized by Montia. And for me, the, the, the thing that is of interest is that unlike the over-the-counter medication, where the solution is the doctor can, will intervene and make sure you are taking the right thing, with those um, uh, herbal medications, there is really no way of even knowing what is in them to know which one is helpful and which one is harmful. What exactly is right. the solution there? Right, so could you... Um, if it comes to that area of herbal medication, I'm, I'm sure uh, Dr. Tano will talk about it because there was a 2019 study um, that he led uh, that looked at the prevalence and pr predictors of chronic kidney disease amongst Ghanaian patients. And they did mention the use of herbal you know, preparations. But um, I want to mention that when we talk about herbal medicines, 
it's a broad area. And in Ghana, we have the Center for Plant Medicine Research located in the Krapim North Municipality, which is my municipality. They are, they are actually neighbors where they have a very scientific approach yeah. to the use yeah. of herbal medicines. Mm. So herbal medicines as a group, we are not going to today on this show say that herbal preparations as a group are dangerous. We are going to talk about the, exactly the example that you gave. People go behind uh, their houses or read something on, on Google, go and get a few herbs together and then grind them, boil them, and then use them as enema or, mm. in, uh, or drink. Um, the, not knowing what the active agents in there are. Some of mm. these plant-based medicines and uh, these preparations that have been prepared this, uh, this particular way, you don't know the active um, um, chemical agents in there. Mm. You don't know what the half-life of these agents are. You don't know whether they are particularly harmful to the kidney or the liver. And unfortunately, some of these plants can knock out your kidney, cause you to develop what we call acute kidney injury. Mm. And some of them actually can be the reason why you develop chronic kidney disease. So these days, they are, unfortunately, our regulatory landscape is not that tight. But at least you must get certification for any medicinal plant from the Center for Plant Medicine Research and the Food and Drugs Administration. Mm. Those ones, they would have checked their nephrotoxicity and to make sure that they are safe, can be used safely, the doses are prescribed, mm. and we actually know the active ingredient in there. Mm. But there are quite a number of them, even including mushrooms. Uh, mushrooms would not be typically classified as plants, but botanically as plants. Mm. But then mushrooms, yeah. some mushrooms can actually be very, very damaging uh, um, wow. um, to the kidney. Okay. Well, I suppose then the, the advice is clear. If it's not FDA approved or licensed by uh, the necessary authorities, do not take it. Okay. Uh, Dr. Dr. Tano, um, before we get into the two big ones, uh, hypertension and diabetes, which is driving the numbers up in Ghana, there is one that you mentioned yourself, and we've talked about it before on a previous show, Galamsi. What is Galamsi doing to our kidneys? Thank you, Kojo. Uh, and I'm hoping um, when we start in, on, into the Galamsi, the conversation does not end with Galamsi. So I would have loved it that maybe <laughs> on your two minutes to time, we'll talk about this because, you know, the Galamsi is, is an emotional issue. So. It is, it is, it is. Yeah, yeah. Um. Hmm. I would want to quickly, I mean, just touch on, I think, what Doc uh, mentioned uh, before I delve into it. In terms of even your, your uh, catchphrase that, oh, if it is approved by FDA, mm. then it is fine. But even there, as a nephrologist, I worry in the sense that when you listen to the radio or you watch the television, Sometimes mm -hmm. they will say that, oh, it has been approved by the FDA, and mm -hmm. oh, if you are pregnant or you are giving a child, uh, you know, breast, you are breastfeeding a child or you are less than 18 or whatever, you cannot take it. Mm. But then my question I ask is that have they been able to test if my kidney function has reduced by 30%, can I take it? If my liver function has reduced by mm. some percentage, mm. can I mm. take it? Mm. And I am actually not sure that some of these studies have gone into detailed kind of work into finding this unique group of people who may have some form of kidney disease one way or the other. Yeah. So the assumption is that everybody being fine, your kidneys are working. But could you, it so happens, I'm not sure how many of you are in the studio now, but putting everybody together, if there are about 10 of you, what I can say is that chances are that one of you or probably two of you might have some form of kidney disease and you don't know about it. Right. So if you go and now take as some medication which you don't know its outcome so far as your kidney is concerned you realize i mentioned that any food you eat any mm. water you drink now any medications you take and all it is the kidney's responsibility to get rid of it from your body now yeah. as, as it is going through your kidney the big question Ghanaians, we should ask ourselves is that what is it doing to my kidney like doc mentioned even us who have tested our medication try to look out for the active ingredient we still say there are side effects. But what is the mantra with herbal medication? Because it is natural. 
it is without side effects, which is a very dangerous statement. Because now the point is, uh, we all eat banana or we all eat some kind of fruit. But it so happens that when you are eating banana, let me use that as, a, as an example, you uh-huh. don't shove all the whole banana into your mouth. What mm. do you do? You peel the skin and you throw it away. Mm. What I ask is that is the skin not natural? It is natural, but we don't eat it, right? Mm. So the mm. fact that something is natural in itself is not, does not mean it is safe. And that is what Ghanaians should be particular about. Mm. When we delve into herbal medication, of course, it's people's daily bread. It's a, a something that, of course, some of us, or all of us have, you know, been giving one herbal medication, some enema, some days by our parents, somewhere along the line. And then the issue is, oh, now you are a doctor, so you are, oh, can you open, so to speak, sorry. But then the point is that we know that some of these things might, over a period of time, harm your kidneys. A lot of people might go without any harm, yes. But then what about you? You going to take it now as we speak. What about you? Do you know your kidney strength? Do you know your kidney's ability? Do you know what it will do to you? And you can say, oh, I've been taking it. Ah, But the point is that if you take once and it doesn't do anything to you, what about if you take it for about three months? What can it do to you? And I have countless examples of people going to all of these places and coming as patients for which we may have to try and correct it. Depending on how they come, sometimes we make some gains in correcting. Other times they may have done over so long a period of time that when it hits into the chronicity, there's very little we can do about it. Yeah. So sorry I had to squeeze this in because I wanted very the, important. the point to be clear. That very it important. is not just, oh, it is safe, so mm. let's just go about it. Or it has been approved, mm. so it is safe for you. The point yeah. is you don't even know your kidney's function. So please, mm. know it first because before you know what you can take in and count it as safe uh, for you. Absolutely. So back to your Galamse issue. Mm-hmm. Yes, I mean, I think... We know these heavy metals, and I think that is the difficulty with the Galamse. They use heavy metals to be able to get the gold they want. And indeed, as they pursue the gold, they throw all caution to the wind. And the point is that if they damage that water, and there's a lot of mercury in that water, and I make people understand, you might say, oh, you are safe somewhere in Accra. You are probably not in the Ashanti region or where they are digging the, the gold or whatever it is like, so you are safe. But the point is, if it gets into the water body and you are even downstream and you are taking this, you know, water because you think, okay, your area is safe or they are using it to, to, to uh, uh, what do you call it? They are using water that might be contaminated to uh, uh, water uh, the vegetables and fruits and all of that that mm. we are going to tell you now to take. Chances are that you might increase these content in your body. Mm. Now, a lot of mercury in your body would eventually cause damage to the brain, to the heart and not just the kidney alone. Mm. So we should also bear in mind that, indeed, normally the quick example I gave, Doc is here. We used to have a lot of mercury thermometers in our uh, uh, mercury uh, space, uh, the one we used to check blood pressures in our hospital. Yes. Now mm. we are facing these off because the point is that there are some hospitals elsewhere. When that mercury uh, sphere breaks, people run away because sometimes when it touches your skin or you inhale it and or it has toxic effects on mm. your body. Mm. Now people actually are standing in the water what they even do is that sometimes they try and, I don't know, they put it in their mouth to try and suck something out of it. To, and no. then they are actually absorbing this mercury in their body. So if this happens no. over a long period of time, the damage to your kidney, the damage to the, the other organs is actually tremendous. And we are tending or we tend to see a lot of patients coming from mining areas. Hmm. from with kidney disease and they are very young people i think we will talk, probably talk about age grouping and kidney disease with but with very young people and hmm. we believe that some of these things may have you know caused the harm and i'm still opening up the last time we had a conversation where the people will support will be able to study it well to be able to say because all of this for now is speculation but we believe that if we are getting young people who live in this area coming with a lot of kidney disease one either because they are getting it more or two they have the money to be able to get onto dialysis but we hmm. believe that, of course, the exposure is what is creating the problem, you? Right. Listen, if you just joined us uh, on Joy 99.7 FM or Love 99.5 FM in Kumasi, we are grateful for your company. But this conversation, it matters to all of us. All right. We're talking about kidney disease. You will not believe what is happening to the numbers in recent times. That is going to be the next leg of our conversation with our two guests we're going to try and understand why these numbers are leaping forward and what danger that poses for all of us dr elliot kranting tano uh, joins us uh, from knust and dr yao osafo uh, joins us from his uh, mountaintop 
uh, residence. Cozy place. <laughs> it's cozy location. Uh, all right, we're talking about kidneys. And uh, look, we've already learned so much. It's, uh, <laughs> it's quite alarming, all right? But the problem is actually nationwide, okay? Um, so let's try and understand why the numbers in Ghana seem to be going up so high. We know that the two big causes are lifestyle diseases like diabetes mm -hmm. and hypertension. But in recent times, the numbers have jumped. Dr. Osafo, you shared a very interesting report with me on this. Um, help us understand what has happened in recent times that has caused the leap. Kojo, thank you. Um, let, me, let me share with our listeners a study that was published in 2019. So it's fairly recent. And it was a... a year review that looked at the trends in um, deaths attributable to kidney disease. And they looked at the period from beginning of January 1994 to December 2013. So it's quite, quite comprehensive. Um, Dr. J and his colleagues. And could you they put the mortality rate at about 5% of all the deaths. Between 1994 and 2010, it was steady. It kept at about 5.0%. Then between 2010 and 2013, there was a jump. It doubled. The mortality rate, the death rate attributable to renal kidney disease, jumped to 10%. From 10 five percent of all deaths, in terms of the death, yes, all deaths hmm. from autopsies, and this review was autopsies. Autopsies conducted in two of the biggest hospitals in Ghana, Konfanochi Conf uh, Teaching Hospital and um, Kolibu Teaching Hospital. Hmm. You know, so for me, what was instructive was that jump, that period between twenty. 10 and 2013 and i am sure the next review that will be done covering 2013 um to maybe 2036 that next 20 years i wouldn't be surprised if there is still an increasing you know trend mm. so we move from if you like five percent um to ten percent in a very very short space of time mm. but and the conclusion they drew from the study why this had happened was that they saw two things. A lot of the patients had, or the, the, the bodies they autopsied, suffered chronic and acute infections. Most mm. likely these infections were bacterial infections. They, and then secondly, hypertension. Mm. So this is what this autopsy review study revealed. So hypertension popped up again. If you look at other studies that have been done, some of them are community-based studies, some of them are single-center studies, and I think the one by um, Dr. Tano and his colleagues, this was a multi-center study. They looked at five centers. Then the top causes are hypertension and then diabetes. But you know, I think something is happening in this country, and I will explain. When it comes to hypertension, and again, one of the things I, I picked up from one of the studies was that, and I think I see that often too, that you have a preponderance of CKD in males compared to females. Yes. Um, I have my own limited uh, research for my 17 years working experience to say that um, when it comes to administration of medicines, I think that women do better than men, mm. particularly when it comes to the use of antihypertensive medication. Mm. You know, hypertension is notorious for destroying your kidneys long term. It is. So it needs to be controlled. But most of the time, the medicines we are using for the control, some of them, some of them have a side effect of erectile dysfunction. Mm -hmm. mm. 
And you know, as men, we hold on to that thing dearly. <laughs> we, we would rather lose a limb. Uh-huh. Than, rather than lose it. Than lose our potency. Yes, yes. Yes. You know, so unfortunately, compliance with antihypertensive medication amongst men in my practice is very low compared to females. Mm -hmm. So a lot of a lot more men go on in life with very high blood pressures and therefore tend to destroy their kidneys over a long period of time and develop CKD and the associated end stage kidney disease. Mm. Probably the same thing happens with diabetes as well. In uh, I think if you compare. Uh, I think we have a problem with the line there. Uh, Dr. Safo, you were about to explain uh, the situation Woman. with diabetes and why it seems to make uh, men more at risk of CKD than women. Sorry, could you say that again? Uh, you were about to explain why diabetes also puts men more at risk of CKD than women. No, yes, I was saying that the health-seeking habits of, mm, of women seems to be better than men. Mm. And therefore, a woman might notice earlier on that I am urinating too frequently at night and therefore present to the hospital. Men are conditioned in a way that until they are really, really, really broken down by any disease, most likely they will not seek health care. Mm -hmm. So by the time they are coming to hospital, we will not come and complain about so-called diaphans and say, oh, but if they're urinating a lot more frequently, you will discuss it with a friend mm. and then come up with some solutions or some explanations mm. uh, to explain it away, and then that is it. <laughs> so we tend not to see the early stages of diabetes in, 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 in men. Uh, um, we tend to, they tend to present late at the clinic, compliance with um, uh, whatever plan of care that you develop for them is poor, in compared to women and therefore i wasn't surprised at some of the conclusions um, um that have come out from some of the studies um uh, by uh, dr tano and his colleagues and other um studies that i have looked at as well so uh the hmm. to condition again the right. salt intake the salt intake the intake of hmm. processed food. Every processed food has salt in it. The contents. These days, I cringe when they open a mall. In I won't mention the name of the places, but people were in celebratory mood because now they, they there was a crime mall. Now there is also a mall in 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 in, in their city. Hmm. And although know, I'm not I, I'm not here to condemn uh, uh, any. A, a supermarket or anything. But the reality is that, the health reality is that increased consumption of processed foods increases your risk of developing hypertension because a lot of processed foods have high content. We are also using a lot of food additives that contain monosodium. And sodium is a very, very important salt, electrolyte, when it comes to the control of the blood pressure. Unfortunately, too, we have a lot of um, um, our local food that contain a lot of salt. So when it comes to nani, be more money, plantain mm. chips, mm. Uh, and you name it, yeah. all these things are highly salted um, um, food uh, products, and we consume in our country. Whew. And then we also put salt, table salt, uh, by the food. Uh, add to taste. Mm -hmm. I don't know what is wrong with some people's taste bad, but the mm -hmm. amount of salt that they drop in their food are uh, uh, not good. Yeah. So, for me, these things explain it away. We are moving gradually. Our society is changing. Our eating habits changing. We're consuming a lot more processed, canned foods, and mm. uh, because of a certain affluence that is developing in the society, yeah. our health-seeking habits are not the best, especially with men. 
and then also compliance with plan of care when it comes to these two chronic conditions are the reasons why we seem to be seeing an increasing number of chronic kidney diseases primarily because of type 2 diabetes and mm. hypertension. Wow. Uh, Dr. Cranting Tano, so how does a nation respond to this? Numbers have doubled. Our ability to deal with kidney disease has not doubled. Our capacity has not doubled. <laughs> I, I, I am afraid to ask how many dialysis machines we have on record in this country. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid to ask. Yet, 13.5% of all cases presented in all OPDs in all hospitals are kidney related. Are we not going to drown under the pressure of this? Yeah, thank you very much, Kojo. I think um, it, it begins with having a conversation. I mean, so using big platforms um, like this, um, it's very helpful, I mean, for us. And I think uh, Dr. Safo has really explained a lot of uh, things uh, for our listenership. Now, I will hit a bit on the mortality. I mean, so mm. Dr. Safo mentioned the mortality in terms of how many of them are dying from kidney disease vis-a-vis -vis yeah. overall causes of death from mm. the post-mortem. Uh, but I would also want to share that within the group of people who report with kidney disease, what the mortalities are. So we did some study here in Confuanochi mm -hmm. where we noted, so we actually um, collected data over a 10-year period. And indeed, our numbers over this 10-year period, OPD, has gone up by about four times. Our hey. admission rate in terms of people coming with kidney disease has gone up by about three times. Now, the staggering part or the danger part that I'm going to mention now is the fact that when I admit about 10 people with some form of kidney disease, hmm. chances are that I'm going to sign death certificate for about three of them. Now, wow. there will be Sense. some of them I may have to just discharge because, of course, it's not like they are well or they can afford dialysis, but we need to make bed for the next sicker patient, if you understand what I'm saying. So yeah. we may say, okay, go home and come and show yourself, and they don't pitch again. They are not part of this statistic. So we believe that invariably, give them some three months, six months, stop, they would uh, pass on. It is staggering. Now, the point is that we have various stages of kidney disease. So we are not saying the kidney disease in itself is death. When you have kidney disease, I have a lot of patients who have had kidney disease for a long time. They are managing themselves well. And I even jokingly tell them that, listen, most likely, Daddy, you are actually going to die from something else, not mm. just from your kidney. So we have serious kidney disease. The problem I have is that the majority of my patients will come in the late stages where we would only have to be considering dialysis. That mm. is confirmatory teaching hospital data, which is similar to what they are getting in Kolebu also. Mm. Over 70%. I ask myself, this group of people, where were they? And I think Dr. Safo mentioned uh, healthcare seeking behavior and all. One thing I will quickly add to the fact that females tend to pick things early is the fact that females are also privileged by the fact that, you know, because they are going to deliver, they would by force, by yeah. ANC or something, be, be exposed to hospital care. So mm. by force, indeed, if you want to come to ANC, we'll check your blood pressure, we'll check your sugar, we'll check your... HIV status, and so on and so forth. So we are able to pick them early. Now, the point is that I might see a 50-year-old man, I'm seeing for the first time now with end-stage kidney disease. I'm afraid if he cannot afford dialysis, he will die in two weeks. And he tells me, Doc, media menyari, so wait, I don't get sick, so I don't go to the hospital. And because you are seeing him now, and his blood level is on the floor, his blood pressure is high, and indeed, he will even add that, oh, sometimes I get headache. And when I get headache, I go for diclofenac, glufen, like these things have been mentioned. So adding insults to injury. Hmm. Now the point is, if we have conversations like this and people get to know the basic things they can do to prevent kidney failure, or for that matter, kidney disease, it is a, a paradigm shift. And I hmm. think that is what makes me very uncomfortable just sitting in consulting room, watching people come in end stages and there's very little you can do for them. When we can educate them, like we are educating them now, and hopefully, if they listen to it, I mean, if we, we educate them and they don't listen, that's another thing altogether. Hmm. But at least our job is done by educating them to be paid, to pay particular attention to some of these basic things. I think we might change the numbers.
Hmm. Your big question, why have the numbers gone high? Or why has the numbers gone too high nowadays? Now, some study that we did in Confanochi, actually, indeed, the diabetes and hypertension are the big causes. But we noted, uh, you that there are some group of people who would come in, they are too young for you to say that they are, the hypertension is what has caused the kidney disease. Right. So most studies before that study of ours would quote that, oh, hypertension is the top most cause of kidney disease in Ghana. And indeed, even across some colleagues, even in Africa, they will say. But we are studying closely to realize that, listen, if you are 25 years and I see you and you have kidney disease and your blood pressure is high, like, like I explained from the beginning, it is more likely that your kidney disease actually, or your kidney function was down and your body's ability to compensate for being down because of the kidney disease is what has given you the blood pressure because mm -hmm. your kidney now cannot control your blood pressure. Mm -hmm. So in that study, we decided to categorize them well based on um, scientific data who we will call that, okay, if we have somebody who's been hypertensive for, let's say, uh, 20 years or 15 years or 30 years and now can, has come with small kidneys or kidney failure, we can say, oh, it's likely the hypertension that caused the kidney disease. But if I have a 24-year-old, how long have you developed this hypertension for you to have developed this kidney disease? Considering sometimes things we also look at, how much protein there is in your urine. So by virtue of that study, we concluded, which some other colleagues across Africa are beginning to believe that, listen, there is another entity, which we call it in umbrella terms, glomerulonephritis, meaning there's something that has gone bad with your kidney over a period of time without our knowledge, without your knowledge, which is presenting with the hypertension. And that right. now becomes the topmost cause. Now, colleagues mm -hmm. across the world are called, calling it kidney disease with cause unknown. We don't know, but they mm -hmm. come in and the kidneys have shut down to the extent that they need dialysis and all. If you do that analysis, then diabetes actually will now, the world over, diabetes is the number one cause of kidney disease. Yes. Clearly. Mm. But in our part of the world, now this CKD cause unknown or chronic kidney disease cause unknown or chronic kidney disease from this big word that I mentioned, meaning there's something going on we all don't know, yeah. seems to be the one that is leading. And I think that is, for me, my interest. Oh, and then now hypertension now will juggle depending on who is doing the study as the second or the third with diabetes. Right. Now, what is this big entity that we don't know? And that is where the conversation starts. Is it because we are born malnourished? Is it because we are not eating well as we are growing? Is it because we are in, uh, exposed to all these diarrhea diseases as we are growing younger? Now, the point is, you, if you are born premature, alone, you start off with being shortchanged in, in terms of the number of cells in your kidney that mm. is supposed to help function. So let's say if you are born at 10 and you have, um, let's say, it's supposed to be 1 million uh, uh, nephrons or small uh, parts of the kidney. Now, some people are born and they are already starting off with less the amount. Oh. And indeed, most likely from our part of the world, they are poor, they are not eating well, they probably are taking all sorts of herbal medication. So we mm. believe that all of these things may be accounting for why we are seeing our patients develop kidney disease at a relatively younger age. Mm. When I go for conferences, Japan is presenting 80 years, 70 years, 60 years, they would say. In fact, most, uh, 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 what do you call it, um, high-income countries will say, oh, risk for kidney disease is 60 and above. I keep laughing at them. It's a joke. In <laughs> Ghana, risk of kidney disease probably starts from birth. And these are the reasons that we think that, indeed, as an adult, as you are listening to me now, as you are, you are following this conversation or you are, going to, or you are watching the video or whatever later, please, please, please. Ask yourself, where do you fall? And do, are you already on 100% or which part of your, the function is your kidney? Because we believe that it's just that drives it. So now, if you already have a background issue without your knowledge, and then now you are taking all sorts of medications, you grow up, you become a young man, you are now 20 years, you want to sleep with all the women in the world, and you go about taking all these potent aphrodisiacs, which <laughs> tends to also cause some huge damage to your kidneys without your knowledge, then by 23, now you become my patient. And that is the worry. Now, let's be careful. Anything that we eat or we take into our bodies and its implication for our kidneys, considering the fact that we are not starting off on the same pedal with our, or on the same level with our colleagues in high-income countries because of all these challenges. Let me also talk about the sun. You see people selling in the sun, walking in the sun, sweating a lot. How much water are they taking? So the whole day, oh, I have not drank water. 
and their urine is as, as dark as you can call it. If you do this over a period of time, you may not have diabetes, you may not have hypertension, you may not have taken a painkiller or alcohol or whatever it is like, but this alone over a period of time has rippling effect on your kidney function. Hmm. So now I have diabetes on top of that, or my parents have, or I have hypertension. And again, this diabetes, hypertension are also silent killers. They don't tell you anything. So there are people, indeed, because I'll tell you this, I have, I'll get a patient who is like 60-something, They'll come with kidney failure. You find out, oh, it's likely from diabetes. And you have a son, a daughter, who has brought this mother to hospital. And I ask, okay, you know mommy has diabetes. And I ask, for how long? Mommy is now, let's say, 60 and got diabetes for 20 years, so let's say 40. And whoever has brought the, uh, what do you call the, the mother, I'll ask, how old are you? And you go, oh, maybe I'm 35. I'll ask, have you ever checked your blood pressure? I'll hear a no. Have you ever checked your blood sugar? I'll hear a no. Sometimes in my clinic, I will force you to check your blood pressure and your sugar there and then. And could you, you know what? It turns out that sometimes their sugars are even higher than those they are bringing to the hospital. Razi. Their blood pressures are <laughs> higher than those they are bringing to the hospital. Yep. So if you want yep. to change the conversation, we begin. We should yep. begin to look at things from the prevention aspect. And again, that is why having this conversation is very important. You know what? If you have a family history, if you have diabetes yourself, please always check your kidney function because... Now we are saying about 13% of Ghanaians. So average, like I said, one out of 10 have some mm. form of kidney disease, whatever you are. Yeah. Now, if this number is that high, why is it that we are not checking ourselves? Because the majority of them will have no something. Do you know what? Like the mobile phone that we use, when the battery drops to, let's say, 10% or 15%, that is what your battery will say, your phone will say, like, charge or low battery or whatever mm -hmm. it is like, right? Yeah. That is exactly how the kidney works. So if you are waiting for symptoms, the symptoms will only show when your kidney function has dropped to about less than 15%. And that is why we are tending to see them come late because they are waiting for symptoms. Mm. And people should not wait for symptoms because the prevalence is high. And if we are not careful, it will continue to be high because of all these things we've uh, mentioned. People's wow. lifestyle, not drinking, the painkillers, taking all sorts of things in the name of herb, uh, what do you call it, medication, I'll say. And again, we are also implicated in terms of our orthodox medication. I won't take that out. But mm. the point is, it depends on who is giving you. Because I'll say, because you, I'll start you on a medication. You come, I'll check your kidney function. And I'll say that I am the same one who started. Because as of the time, your kidney function was this. But now mm. you've got in here. So let's change to something else. We need to be mindful of, about our health. Yeah. And Kojo, you mentioned something, that young people are willing to lose the meals when it has to do with antihypertensives and all. They are willing to lose a limb. Mm. Sorry to correct you. I have come to realize young men are actually willing to lose their lives. Yeah. Not just the limb. Hmm. Their lives. <laughs> and they say it blatantly to us. We hear it all the time. Yeah. So it is not the limb. As for the limb, they probably they lose it. They don't mind. They are... Hmm. Hey, my tabby, this. Listen, I, I, I've got to say that uh, we, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've, yeah. we've really kicked the hornet's nest. Mm -hmm. We've opened Pandora's box, and so we have to see this through to the end. Doctor Safo, Doctor Tano, I beg you, we must return to this, but we have to do it in a way that allows our audience to ask you questions. Okay, oh. so we'll see how we can situate you know you in the studio yeah. uh, or by whatever we'll have to do. We'll make use of the, the, you know, the opportunity of technology as well so that our audience can engage you because right. uh, uh, the, the matter is scary. But for now, I want to say a big thank you to Dr. Yao Safo, Specialist, uh, Clinical Biochemistry and Toxicology, and Dr. Elliot Kranting Tano, Senior Lecturer, Department of Medicine, KNUST, uh, also a consultant, nephro nephrologist at Confanochi. Uh, he also happens to be a kidney health advocate and, uh, at, with, with Kidney Health international god bless you both please let's do this again